As part of the opening reception, we also had performers. We're going to go into the recital hall and see playwrights Esther Hoffman and Greg Abbott perform their plays. Then we'll see three musicians perform. They include Carolyn Borgman, Ryan Ackerman, and Joe Tugas. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Clara. Hi, Clara. Hi, Clara. I'm a compulsive menstruator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can stop. I just relapse every month. <laughs> you know, I, I guess it, it is out of control. I mean, I, I, I swim while menstruating. I, I get these cravings and I eat cheese that doesn't belong to me. I admit, menstruating makes me feel like a big woman. I learned from my mother. She was menstruating before I was born, but swear she stopped while she was pregnant. When I told her that I tried menstruation, just once and just a little bit, she bought my first box of pads. The word freedom across the top. A blonde woman in white shorts riding a bike, doves flying above her head. Freedom? White shorts? <laughs> Lies! Those baby powdered pink and white flip flops for the crunch. I went through three before breakfast. Always wanting more. Dry weave, spill guard, wings! Soon enough, I was buying my own at the drugstore. The clerk, always this hot guy. At least I think he was hot. I was ovulating out of my mind. Never could look him in the eye, just held out a Lincoln. At school, other girls were experimenting too. It was the 90s. <laughs> we'd meet at our lockers, palm a tampon, and sneak off to the girls' bathroom. We'd pass pads underneath the stalls. And if we got real desperate, we'd roll up toilet paper. But we never went to the school nurse. We knew what she was peddling. The stuff left over from the 70s. Called it Kotex. <laughs> Fuzzy, embalmed with these little seashells, roll into a ball when you want the adhesive only sticking to. <laughs> Pity the red rag or bleeds on that. <laughs> we, 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 we talked in code. Aunt Flo's coming to town. <laughs> Gonna ride the crimson wave with the cotton pony. <laughs> it was Eve's curse, our little friend. I dug mine, my no baby blood. Together, we joked. But alone, I had become ritualistic, a one-woman bloodletting cult. Place the zits on the chin, only on the chin. Eat the chocolate pretzels until they are no more. Expand the uterus to love three times three and spill the blood. Uh, you know, to the outside world, I, I, I do appear to be a functioning adult. During a three-day flow, I managed to get to work and act like I don't want to stay on the point. <laughs> but those closest to me do see the insecurity, the constant need for unwarranted reassurance. Am I pretty? So this weekend, I hit my rock bottom. And I almost killed my boyfriend. I didn't tell him, but we went camping and I was deep in a flow. In the middle of the night, I popped a squat just a little ways above, or away from the tent above a ravine. And I started to hear this slow thud coming up and behind me. A moose picking up pace! I, I hauled ass back to the tent! Now my boyfriend is extremely codependent, so he just laughs the whole thing off, saying that animals are attracted to menstrual blood and lucky it wasn't a wolf. Uh. <laughs> this force beckons wild animals. <laughs> it is greater than I. I admire the women who stop for good. The hot flashes and night sweats they have while coming down. 
My, my sponsor said she feels free like when she was a little girl. And one day I hope to be on, be beyond the cramps and the bloating and the rages. I, I didn't menstruate today. And I don't plan to for at least two weeks. I'm feeling positive. My mind is clear. But I know when my time of the month comes, I'm Clara. And I'm a compulsive menstruator, period, exclamation point. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank Prairie Lake so much. With this money, I was able to get a laptop which, you know, I'm sure the people at the public library missed me typing out all my scripts down there, <laughs> but it's a lot easier now. So, and if there's anybody who has any questions, I did a one-woman show called Suffering for Nothing, which uh, was performed here, and then Greg actually um, <laughs> paid to have it done up at the fringe, so it's great. Um, <laughs> are there any questions? You did good. Question <laughs> mark? <laughs> collaboration comes after you have done, you kind of write alone, um, and then the collaboration part comes when you hand it over to a director or um, a producer, and then they cast it, and that's kind of how that collaboration all happens. So it's really interesting because you kind of do have to be able to let go of it, because they might <coughs> change one of your characters or um, a line. Um, right now, I did a show um, with Greg, Mary's Functional Christmas, which also has Michelle Roach and Jennifer Pachochnik in it. Um, and that was very fun. And I'm also working with Partners in Crimes and the Murder Mysteries, so right now my current project is writing a murder mystery for them. And uh, yeah, that came out real fast, which was kind of disturbing, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anybody else? <clears throat> All right, he's kind of scared. down in Whoville, liked Christmas a lot. But the Trump, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Trump hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be, perhaps, that his hair was too light. It could be that his toupee wasn't glued on just right. Yes, the future GOP nominee here. <laughs> <laughs> if 
If I ran the view, I thought I'd go see him done. I would look at her big, fat, ugly face and say, Rosie, you're fired. <laughs> he slid down the chimney to some a tight pinch, but with his hair slime and greaser, his way down was a cinch. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room, he took every present. He took all the iPhones and iPads <laughs> and super snow sled flyers and left campaign posters, apprentice games, and political flyers. You know, all the women on The Apprentice flirted with me, either consciously or unconsciously. <laughs> That's to be expected. He took all the little gumblies and famous beer coolie kegs. He even stole war hero John's prosthetic. <laughs> call him a war hero is because he was captured. And I like people who aren't captured. Okay? <laughs> Of the trucks in the world, 2016 took 
Trump's campaign down the toilet with a huge swirl. No! Tattooed is an idiot! No! Welcome, Christmas. Bring your cheer. No longer will hate and ignorance fill your ear. Christmas Day will always be as long as we have we. <laughs> Um, I've been doing playwriting for about eight years, mainly short plays, uh, a lot with Mankato Mosaic. Um, some have been produced out on the East Coast and West Coast. I always try to have something available for Christmas time. This year I got a call from the Grand wondering if Mosaic is going to do a show. They're on hiatus for about a year or so. I said, I'll see, I'll call a few people, see what we could put together. And that's where we got Jennifer and Michelle and Esther. And we started talking about our, you know, the Christmases that really stand out in your memory. And a lot of times it's the Christmases that just went really haywire. So that's where we came up with the idea for a dysfunctional Christmas. And of course, uh, Politics fit right into that. So, uh, that's kind of where this skit came from. Um, and again, we got a grant, so we didn't have to worry about this little skit. It was like three boxes of props and a uh, hair piece and a suit and all that stuff. So it really helped cover our setup costs and, and performance. Took that out, so we didn't. We could actually put it on with everything that we needed for the show. Any other questions? And how does that fit in with the other theater groups you're with? Why don't you mention Mosaic and the Shorts yeah. Festival? Yeah. Um, Mankato Mosaic. Can you stop your... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, you can tell it's like the end of the run for this wig. <laughs> <laughs> It'll walk home on its own. <laughs> but um, I started with Mankato Mosaic, and they were looking for local scripts. And I have a playwriting group called Four Playwrights uh, because at our first meeting only four people showed up. <laughs> so uh, we had some scripts that we gave to them um, and they incorporated some. And as our group grew, uh, we did a lot more of the plays with Mosaic. I also coordinate the Minnesota Shorts Play Festival and that runs the Thursday, Friday after Labor Day. This year we're teaming up with Merely Players so they're going to cast everybody and find directors for everyone. And it's, we take national submissions so far this year. We already have 250 submissions and we're only halfway through the month. So we'll probably again get 500 national submissions and about 100 Minnesota submissions. And they're all 10 pages or less. And um, Merely Plays will be putting it on. So look for that in September at Lincoln Community Theater. Thank you.